Hi everyone. If you are at a stage of your research where you are trying to decide which method of data collection to adopt for your research study, in today's video, I will compare five such methods and highlight the positives and negatives, the advantages and disadvantages of each method so you can go through it and then decide for yourself which would be the best one suited for your research studies. Let's get started. In today's video, I will mainly compare five methods, they being surveying versus interviews, and then on the same parameters, observations versus experiments. And towards the end, I will discuss the same for unobtrusive data, which I will explain what it is, if you have not watched my previous videos on unobtrusive data. So let's start with surveying. Now, as you know, surveys are normally used to reach a large number of respondents. But if you think about it, you can only reach a large number of respondents if the respondents respond to your survey, fill up the survey correctly, do not miss out any details. So that's why, although we say that the surveys can be used a for a large number of respondents, you have to remember that it is only possible if you get the response back. So use the survey and if you want to get access to a large number of respondents, make sure that you are sending it to the population that you can somehow chase up and get a response to your survey. In comparison, what happens with interviews? So interviews can also reach a large number of respondents. But again, the issue is the same. Do you have the time to interview hundreds of people, especially in-depth interviews? If you are carrying out quick interviews, they will not be in-depth and then you can reach a large number of people. So of course, in theory, you can use interviews to reach a large number of respondents but sometimes time will not allow you to do so. Surveys definitely represent a population. If you can access hundreds of people or thousands of people, definitely a, such a large sample in surveys will represent a population. The same can be said about interviews as well. But can it really? Because like I said with interviews, it is the time factor. If you are thinking of interviewing people, you normally stick to a smaller sample size so that you can go in depth to an interview, get more knowledge from them. So although technically speaking, one might say it might represent a population if you access hundreds of people, but you have to think about it from the practical approach as well. Surveys are however not best for smaller accessible populations. So what do I mean by smaller accessible populations? Well, let's take the example of homeless people or people who have been maybe sexually abused when they were young. They are smaller and accessible, but they are smaller population, difficult to reach out to. So surveying may not be the right way because those guys may not respond to your service. Interview, yes, you can. You can reach out to a, a smaller accessible population, but you have to remember that sometimes even in interviews, they may hesitate to divulge any details unless you have built that trust and rapport with them. Surveys can be used to generate in-depth qualitative data. Do not always associate surveys with quantitative data. They can be used if you especially have uh, spaces available where the respondents can type in or write in their answers in detail. But it is not the best way to generate in-depth qualitative data as you can in interviews. Surveys are best for generating quantifiable data, data that you can then do a numerical analysis using Excel or SPSS, uh, you can um, allocate any kind of uh, numerical data or coding to it to generate that kind of data, which is not the case so much with interviews. Of course, in interviews, you can ask the interviews to respond to certain questions which can generate quantifiable data, but it is not popularly done. So. Surveys, of course, cannot generate verbal data interviews definitely can generate both verbal and non-verbal data. The surveys, the data is used or rather the data generated is used expressively for your research study and it is the same with interviews as well. 
surveys do not use existing data and neither do interviews you have to collect primary data you have to collect the data yourself for surveys you generally do not have to build much trust and rapport with your respondents but for interviews and to get the correct and the honest response you need to build trust and rapport with your respondents surveys it's allows for comparison maybe a pre test survey to a post test sur survey and interviews allow it as well so you can conduct interviews before testing and then after testing as well so both the methods can be used for comparison when we say comparison i mean the same sample before and after the intervention that's what we say surveys can be anonymous and confidential and so can be the interviews they can be anonymous and confidential all right so this was a comparison of surveys with interviews now let's compare observations with experiments so observations as you know uh, are carried out where a researcher observes a sample of population but can we say it represents a population well of course one might argue that it does because you are you can observe a number of people but remember if you are trying to observe six people versus hundreds of people of course observing six people is easier so we won't really say that it does represent a population but the same issues with experiments as well with experiments as well one might say it represents a population but again remembering to control an experiment with lesser number of people is easier than trying to control an experiment with hundreds of people so these both these methods are not the best to reach a large number of respondents or to even use it uh, experiments are not good to use with smaller accessible population but you can use observations to uh, with smaller accessible populations the examples i give you like homeless people or people who have been sexually exploited when they were younger something like that observations can generate both in depth qualitative data and sometimes also quantifiable data of course they can generate yes with experiments they sometimes generate in depth qualitative data but most of the time experiments are used to generate quantifiable data data that you can do a numerical analysis on observations can be used to generate non verbal as well as verbal data which is expressively for or exclusively for your research the same can be said for experiments as well for observations you need to build trust and rapport with your respondents so that you can come back to collect some additional data if you want to right with experiments however you sometimes need to build trust and rapport but it's going to be very challenging for you to again conduct the same experiment using the same people uh, because now your data might get corrupted because these guys are now prepared as to what you're going to be asking them so with experiments it's a bit challenging to revisit the same sample of people for data collection with observations you can be anonymous and confidential and sometimes you can be non interventionist as well where you do not let people know that you are observing them there are some ethical issues with that but there are situations there have been of course number of cases and experiments where the observers have not allowed the respondents to know that they are present or they are observing them with experiments of course you can be confidential but it's very hard to be anonymous because you are the scientist you are present there and you cannot be a non interventionist because you are kind of part of the process you are part of the data collection so you have to be uh, sort of interfering in the process of data collection some other ways we can compare observations with experiments is in observations of course you observe it yourself you do the same for experiments as well and experiments are normally used to explore the cause and effect relationship which is not so much the case with observations observations you are just observing as to what happens in natural settings right 
you can use observations to explore tangents or what we call as interesting directions so maybe you started off using the observation to explore a certain research problem but you found some interesting directions or exploring tangents that you can explore further investigate further to answer your research problem uh, with experiments it's going to be very challenging for you to revisit it or conduct the same experiment or start exploring some other tangent um, and not what you created the experiment for so if you have created the experiment to explore or investigate a certain problem you can't just go off on a tangent and start exploring something else for that you might need a separate experiment observations are used to collect evidence of what people actually do normally in real world settings but you cannot manipulate anything you don't want to manipulate anything as well you just want to observe and note down what happens in the real world however with experiments it's the same you actually collect the evidence of what people actually do but experiments are very useful if you want to manipulate the real world settings right, so you can create an intervention you want to change something and note people's behavior so for example would people be more productive if there are more breaks given during the work hours but in observation you just want to see what happens with productivity during the normal working hours now observations can be allowed or can allow a comparison of data and so does experiments both allow a comparison of data there's nothing wrong with either of them we finally move on to unobtrusive data and for those of you who have not seen my video on unobtrusive data unobtrusive data is the method of data collection in which researchers and research process are removed from the researched so there is no direct interaction between the researcher and the respondents examples of unobtrusive data are pre-existing government data and records corporate data personal records media arts and social artifacts so let's study what is unobtrusive data and what are the advantages of it what are the features for it using the same parameters that we did for the other four methods of data collection so unobtrusive data is mostly secondary data however it can represent a population if the secondary data was collected for a big sample of respondents it can be used to obtain in-depth qualitative and quantifiable data depends on the kind of data you have collected not collected but rather gathered or acquired because in this one in this kind of data collection you don't collect the data but you can use this kind of data to compare it with your primary data so you can use it for comparison however this data will not be generated or not be obtained or it will not be exclusively for your research however you can interpret this data to answer your research problem and research questions so therefore you can't use it to explore cause and effect relationships but you can use it to explore interesting directions or the tangents that you might find during your investigation you can analyze this data to see what people or how people reacted in certain real world settings but of course because this is pre-collected data you can't manipulate the settings you can be confidential but however you cannot be anonymous or non-interventionist because you have to reveal who this data is for who were the people and you have to reveal the uh, uh, details of the data process in your research for the examiners or reviewers so use this unobtrusive data mainly to compare you can use this as a baseline data or you can use this as a historical data for analysis and then collect your data and use it for comparison so guys i hope you like this video where i collected or rather where i discussed the five methods of data collection based on this think about which would be the best suited for your research and which which cause you least amount of problems thank you for watching today's video and i'll see you soon with my next video bye for now